Okay, so today we're going to talk about how we use add-on panels and applied doors and stuff like that on our cabinets. So the first thing you want to do is go to the uh, settings tab and make sure you selected something for add-on panels or ends and panels. So this is if you want to use an applied panel on the side, you can select here. It will give you access to your door library. In this case, it's picking up the library that you've set here, which is the thermal vision library I set up here. Uh, so if you have a different library, you'd have to have it set in the door menu. Um, here you can set up, like say, for example, if you want the base door to be a proper full door, you can do that. Uh, this is where you set it. So I'm just going to leave that default for now because I'm just mostly worried about uh, how to set the add-on panels and the overlays and stuff like that. Uh, so then we're going to go to here, set it at just a slab. As you can see at the bottom here, I extend mine to the floor. Now for mosaic, there's kind of, I don't know if it would be considered a good feature or a workaround or what, but there's not really an easy way to make these run to the floor if you don't have uh, if you're using adjustable legs or something like that, we use adjustable legs. So if you have a toe kick notch, it will just run it to the floor anyways, but it'll also put a notch in the panel as well. So we just like our panels, full panel, run to the floor, no toe kick notch. So when I do that, um, we have set up in the shape tab, you can see we have two add-on panels here. So we hit adjust side and it brings up this menu. And it also allows you to select the applied door or the end part. So if you want the end part, you can select that. Or if you want to do the applied door, which we're doing, you can set it there. Now, this number here, so we set it at four and three quarters. Um, that's the, our toe kick height we're extending down on the bottom. Just for an example, let's say the left side. So you want to add a little bit of extra scribe on the side. Um, I think it's the left side. So you want a half inch extra. So you can see there, we've added a half inch on the back. That's if you want extra scribing on the back. Kind of nice for that. Um, the nice thing too is uh, once you've set that, you can now go from, if you go into the parameters menu, go from applied door to no doors, and then it will take that off. So now you have just a finished end cabinet. Right, so we click OK. It's just a finished end cabinet. I just have the material texture set at MDF, so it's nothing special. Uh, now, when you bring it back, you all you have to do is click Apply Door, and it automatically can, keeps that little four and three quarter measurement and the half inch measurement in here, regardless. So what we've done is we've saved this in our library, so we saved it to the library. So every cabinet that has that you have set up in your library, you'd have to go through it and set up a four and three quarter adjust side on the bottom if you want to extend that down. The nice thing about this too is if you set up applied doors, when you have, uh, say for instance, you have a wall cabinet, let's say a pair of doors. And if I put no finished ends, but then I want to add in essentially the same thing, just an applied panel to the side of it. And I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it on that side. So now I have an applied panel on each side. If I run the crown like that, the automatic molding, we go into the molding tab and we hit automatic mold. It's going to run the crown and it's going to look correct. Oh, I set this as a wall cabinet, that's why it's getting crowned. Um, so if we, but the issue is, well, I'll show you, it's not flush to the door, it's recessed back. It's making it the same depth as the case. So what you're trying, what you'd like to do is you'd like to make it, let's go back to the products tab. I'd like to make it three quarters deeper so it's flush to the door. And you can also do formulas in here too, which is nice. And 
then we'll go back to the molding tab and we hit automatic mold and click OK. You can see it does this weird jog around here because it's assuming this cabinet is deeper. And that's just kind of the way the nature and how it's set up. But if you use the integrated applied panel, which again is all pretty much the same thing, we delete this. Oh, products tab. Delete that, delete that. You may see this if you have a fridge upper and you have a partition on the side of it, your crown looks wonky. Um, so we have this, we have finished ends on both. It still does the same thing, flush to the door. And if you go to the automatic mold, mosaic for some reason can tell the difference that that is a add-on panel and to make the crown correctly. So it does a better job at figuring out the crown. Now, if you have, say for instance, you have a fridge upper and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just manually draw the crown around it. But if you want to just take, let's go here and let's say this depth is 24 inches deep. The height is 18. And then you know your elevation is 72. Go here, go to shape tab, go here, adjust size, 72 on the bottom, boom, that becomes your fridge cable. The nice thing about that again is now you've got, um, you've got this panel set up here and again you can save this to your library and when you do the crown molding, it will automatically do the crown right. So again, same thing goes for anything that's got an applied panel. We usually recommend applied doors. And I'll just show you one more thing about an applied panel. So let's delete that and we'll delete that. You have, let's say you have an island and you have Two door, let's just say a two door cabinet. And you have a super deep two door cabinet, 30 inches deep, let's say 36. And you want to change this to an applied panel. I'm gonna show you two things you can do. So shape, or applied door I should say. Go to the shape tab, you go to section and you select a different door style. I want this to match the doors, so I'm going to select this. Okay, and then you may select the center. Well, we'll just click OK at this point so you can see the difference. Now you've got a big door on the side. We're going to go back to section. Here you can split it. You can split it vertically, which is probably going to be the more likely thing. Split it vertically, and now you have a center partition there. Okay, the third thing you can do is we're going to select a traditional door, not a mitered door. So let's say this one, for example, we're just going to use defaults. Uh, you want to do down here, I want to do six inches wide because that's a nice way to handle around an island. And I want to add a center partition. And I want to make this three inches. You can do it here too. Three, 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 three. Gives it a bit more and it's a little bit nicer for if you have a baseboard coming into it you can add a little height to your bottom panel to bring the baseboard into it cleanly all right so a few different ways to do add-on panels and apply doors with frameless cabinets now the parameters for this let's just show you ends. We have set this parameter to apply doors flush at face. I'm oh, sorry, apply doors. This one flush at face. The other option is to put it in in at the case depth. Uh, so those two need to be set. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, you can go to the doors tab and you can go to 
apply a frameless reveal unfinished end what's what this is going to do is it's going to give you an extra little bit where you haven't applied end like that because if you just have a 16th there uh, and you haven't applied end on both sides you could be running a little bit tight so you can add it make it we make it jump to an eighth gap on the side there uh, then you have that and then apply door width adjustment here you can add or minus if you want to add a little bit more throughout the whole thing you would just update consistently all right so uh, that's about it for today thanks for watching